Welcome to another weekly recap from Comic Art Fans. We're going to cover the time period of July 20th through the 26th. I know I wanted to get these out every Friday, but so far I'm unable to keep up with that. But I hope next week to be able to do that. My editor Colin Sullen and I are going to be uh, giving a few more things for him to work on, and hopefully that will free up some more of my time. So with that in mind, there were uh, about 1,600 new artworks added to CAF Galleries last week. That's low average, but not too bad. I'd rather it be in the 1,800 range to 2,000 when possible. We had a total of uh, 52,000 visitors to the site last week, and there were probably on average around 100,000 page views every day. All those are pretty standard. CAF is pretty stable, except when there's uh, special events going on where we get more traffic, or potentially when there's a con uh, during a weekend when we might get a little less, but this is going to always sound like a carbon copy week to week because that's pretty typical. The big news of the week, of course, was last weekend was San Diego's Comic-Con at Home. Uh, plenty of people that I know sort of participated in it. I think some people did good. I've heard about a lot of artists that did uh, pretty well on getting commissions lined up. Things went pretty fast, a lot like a normal con, so that's pretty cool. However, a lot of dealers that we work with, of course, did their own thing, which was a lot of fun to watch. Felix, in particular, had his own show that he did and uh, did about four big art drops with Trad Moore and Paul Pope as the featured artist for those art drops. He sold over $110,000 of artwork that late that, that weekend, and it was pretty impressive. It just goes to show you that, um, you know, the brick and mortar cons not being here aren't really hurting anyone's business. And the great thing is, is it's providing people like Felix and other people like Panel Page and Albert and Ramita Man who can throw out alternatives to in-person shows just saying, hey, I'm doing this and drive sales. And I think it's going to probably show a lot of those guys that there are alternatives to being at shows. And of course, nothing beats being at a show when there's the opportunity to maybe pick up something that you couldn't have shaken out of the market otherwise, um, you know, and the ability to meet in person with other collectors and dealers and whatnot. But I don't know, I think uh, with probably 8, 10, 12 more months without shows, there's going to be a lot more uh, weekend art drops and things of that nature going on, uh, and it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm really looking forward to seeing what everybody else is going to come up with. So the main takeaway, of course, is no San Diego Comic-Con, no problems for comic art dealers. Dealers' sales for that week were in excess of $280,000. On the asking price front, the top uh, piece for the week was a Betty Page cover by Dave Stevens that was... Uh, offered at $36,000. Then there was a Swamp Thing DPS from Toddleben and Bissett, whose asking price was $16,000. A Fantastic Four 236 page by John Byrne, priced at $12,500. A Journey into Mystery 108 page by Jack Kirby and Chick Stone at $11,500. From uh, Brick Comics Art, there was a Frank Miller Martha Washington charity auction that had a final price of $10,000. And from, from Felix, there was a uh, Godzilla cover by Yuko Shimizu for $8,000 and a Silver Surfer Black number 2 cover from Trad Moore, which also sold for $8,000. Now, when it comes to original comic art dealer data, you have to always remember that I'm only reporting on the dealers whose sites I host and have built because when a dealer sets their art for sale, I list it in our inventory. When they mark it as sold, I remove it from our inventory and list it in our market data. So I don't really know if the price was a little less, it certainly isn't going to be a little more, but I can't tell you whether or not there was some trade involved or uh, the price was lowered, was it half K, you know, trade, half cash, hard to say, can't say, all I can tell you is what it was priced at when it was marked as sold. Now, auction house front, I was also pretty surprised that we ended up at $312,000 plus. There wasn't really any standout pieces that I remember seeing during the week, and uh, but surprisingly, a V cover from Edward Barreto sold for $6,600 on Heritage. Also, a really nice Machine Man page from Trimpy and Barry Windsor Smith sold for $4,800. A Sergeant Fury's Howling Commandos Dick Ayers page sold for $4,560. And my favorite of the week, a Man Thing number no. 2 cover Bob, by Bob Wyasek sold for $3,840. And of course with Heritage, obviously all those pieces, that's including the buyer's premium uh, that always gets tacked onto their stuff. You have to kind of work the math to figure it out. That's a 20% added on. Um, 
also adding to those figures is some sales from eBay. There was a really uh, nice Alan Kupperberg uh, splash page from the Invaders number 32, which sold for 3650 There was a uh, Mike Mignola sketchbook piece that sold for 3280 as well. I, I didn't really put it in the report, but there was actually listed with a buy it now, a Stanley sketch of Spider-Man that supposedly was sold for $8,000. Whether that's true or not, I can't really say. I'm not really sure that, uh, you know, which is why I didn't want to put it at the top of the list. If anybody thinks otherwise, I'd love to hear what your thoughts are. Now, uh, with upcoming auctions, there are uh, a couple, couple big ones coming up. There's actually currently the Comic Link's uh, focused comic art auction, which, which ends Tuesday, August 11th. Comic Connect has their latest event auction starting on Monday, August 3rd. So just a few days away. Um, and shortly after Comic Link's main, uh, their current focused auction ends, they will have their summer featured auction starting, I believe, on August 13th. So uh, those are ones to look out for. There was also a really big sig signature auction coming from Heritage in September. Now on the convention front, a couple things to remind everybody about. The mainframe Comic Con that benefits the Hero Initiative is going to be the weekend of August 15th and 16th, like I told you last week. Support them, support the Hero Initiative. Don't bother with Reed Pop and whatever else they're doing that weekend. Um, Comic Art Con is also going to be trying to host their uh, their show in New Jersey on August 23rd. So that's going to be uh, interesting to see how it works out. My fingers are crossed for them. I really hope they can get the show together and make it work. Um, I know that they were trying to finalize a few uh, of the booth setups and dealers that they were bringing in this week. So, and then also, of course, is Comic Art Live. Mark your calendars, November 14th and 15th. So uh, for that, it's going to be a lot more fun. I can't wait to start working on it. I think in the next couple of weeks, I'll be able to tell everybody a little bit more about how we're going to change the format for everybody as far as what they can sell, how much they can sell. Will we have a set, how we'll do the second day uh, and how we'll allow new artwork to go into the show at the same time. It's going to be a much better, more well-organized show, I think. And I'm really looking forward to talking with you more about that. Um, I want to get to the featured artwork for the week. Now, you know, it was really fun putting this list together. There are uh, a couple of Joker pieces that end up being the bookends to begin and end the display. I think you're really going to like them all. Uh, there's two Tony Daniel pieces in there as well. Um, Tony is a CAF member and uh, sells a lot of his artwork through CAF, so I'll put a link to in the description below that helps you uh, find his artwork for sale. His piece is the beginning of this, a really nice Joker piece. So with that in mind, here we go. First up, like I mentioned, is a Joker piece, and it's by Tony Daniel. Tony's actually got a gallery on CAF, like I mentioned, so you can find his artwork to purchase there. This is a really good Tower of Shadows cover by Bernie Wrightson, and the funny part about this is that the two gentlemen pictured there, on the left it's Len Wine, and on the right, in the shorts, it's actually Bernie Wrightson himself. Now this here is a Legion of Superheroes Millennium Number no. 2 double page spread by Jim Chung. I really love Jim's work. Look at that Kirby-ish gun right in the middle there, it's fantastic. Now this piece is from owner Paul P, Amazing Spider-Man 667 and Superior Spider-Man Team Up No. 1. Both pieces are by Humberto Ramos and uh, Paul presented these as two pieces because they are very similar in story. This next piece is by Ian Bertram, of course, repped by Felix Comic Art. This was an artist choice commission that was given to Ian, and he knocked it out of the ball park for sure. And up next is a X-Men Forever title page that was also used as a second print cover by Tom Grummet and Corey Hampshire. Uh, always been a fan of Tom's work, crisp line work, very uh, detail oriented. Now this one is a Mike Berkey piece that he owns. It's a Gil Kane, John Romita, Amazing Spider-Man number 89 page. Mike's been rolling these out like once a week. I think he just likes getting in these lists a lot. Here is a Hellboy in Mexico cover by Mike Mignola, of course. You know, Mike can do no wrong when he puts his uh, efforts into putting a cover together. All these uh, tombstones around the Hellboy, just classic. Next up, of course, is a Mike Zek, John Beatty. Secret Wars number nine page from 1985. If you're like me, grew up in the 80s, Secret Wars was uh, one of your favorite storylines. And uh, here is the second piece by Tony Daniel. 
It is the cover to Detective Comics number 11. Tony's attention to detail just always blows me away. I, you know, and I love this cover because it is just jam filled with detail. Now this one is a uh, kind of an odd piece. Richard Delgado, he uh, works in film and in comics. This is from his own Age of Reptiles number two page. My buddy Eric DLS owns it and it's a brilliant piece. And last but not least, this Joker, Year of the Villain, Hell Arisen number three splash page by Javier Fernandez. Really, really like the intensity of this piece. It's really uh, exciting, fun, dynamic. Speaking of Javier Fernandez, I wanted to actually be able to tell you where you could buy his original artwork. And after I'd done a little bit of research, I saw that he was apparently being repped by a uh, one company and they listed their art for sale as a link to CAF. So I did a little re research there. That particular company hasn't used CAF since 2019. So it was a little perplexing and I wasn't sure what I was going to do. And ironically enough, I literally not two minutes ago, just got an email from Kirby's Comic Art. It was a PR piece mentioning that Javier Fernandez is repped by Kirby's Comic Art. So if you want to buy some artwork by Javier Fernandez, I highly recommend you check out Kirby's Comic Art because that's his new rep. So there you go. Isn't that awesome? I would never have guessed that it would actually come in while I'm doing this recording. So two thumbs up to Kirby's for taking care of that little bit of business for me because I don't uh, know what I would have done without it. All right, I'm calling it a wrap for the day. Thanks for listening. Be sure to check out the link below in the description so you can check out all the cool artwork that we featured this week. And uh, don't miss out on any of the topics that we covered because clearly there's a lot more information over on CAF than I'm going to cover here. Please subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any updates that we might have throughout the week or month, etc. We've always got something going on next Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern. We're doing another Comic Art live chat with... Uh, Mike Berkey, Glenn Brunswick, and Will Gabrielle and I, and our guest will be collector Dr. Patrick Kochanik. Dr. Pat is a longtime Frazetta collector, he's probably got more experience in the hobby than he, any one of us, easily, and I'm really looking forward to talking to him. I've admired his calf gallery for a long time, and it's going to be a lot of fun chatting with him, and we've got a few other guests lined up for the rest of August. It's going to be a really interesting month. I think you're going to enjoy it. So I don't want you to miss any of our updates and our videos that are coming up and live chats. Thanks. Take care. See you next week.